I'm going to be talking today about an audio side project that I've been working on using a programming language called Faust. Has anyone heard of Faust? I think it's a pretty obscure thing. It's like a functional audio programming language. Okay. And then also Native Instruments Reactor 6, which is a musical instrument, and it's a commercial software. Has anyone heard of Reactor or used Reactor? Okay, we have one, two, three, four. Okay, awesome. Four people in the crowd. And, and this is pretty informal, so I just have a couple slides kind of introducing what I'm working on. And then I'm going to kind of jump into demo time, and we'll take a look at what I've been doing. So if you have any questions, you can stop me at any time. Super informal. I've been working on a couple things, and they kind of fall under the Chili Corn project umbrella. And the two projects I've been working on is Composing Code, which is a podcast where in the first season I talk about how to approach writing code, maybe if you're new to writing code at, through the lens of audio or a musician. And we're starting our second season. We have a trailer, and now we're kind of getting into prototyping and writing audio plugins, which is super cool. So that's something I do, part of the SPICE program. And the other thing I got involved with is this Chili Corn Records, Compilation 3. So has anyone heard of Chili Corn Records? Is anyone here involved with it or have created a track? OK. So more people have heard than have participated. But it's another really cool thing that we have through Chili Corn here at Futurize. And it's a way to kind of create music and create open source music. So. On the podcast, I've been kind of interested in, in my story with this module here, which is called MOTM, and I can't remember what it stands for, but we can jump on the website and, and listen to it, hopefully. Um, but this is a, a modular synth module, and a long, long time ago, I started to get interested in modular synths. And, and if you haven't used them before, you might know that they're pretty expensive. So I bought the power supply, and I started soldering it together, and I got it all ready. And then I got laid off of my job, and I had no money. So I ended up with a power supply, and I've always thought about this like for, I don't know how long it's been, 10 years, in the back of my head, and I've never had it. So what I've been interested in is uh, using Reactor and using ways to kind of model this and create a similar kind of sound because I don't really have access to it. All right. So I'm going to jump into demo time. I think it's maybe useful. I'll go and show you what it is a little bit. It's maybe not even more obvious what it is from reading about it, because it's a bit technical. But maybe we can listen to a couple of samples of what it does. So it says, input is TB303, output is distorted mess. Let's see if this plays. This was probably the dry signal at first. And now they're starting to modulate. Let's listen to a flute turn into a thrash metal guitar. All right, so maybe initially it kind of sounds like distortion, but I'll try to explain quickly what's going on. So you give it an input signal. So in the case, they gave it a TB303 synthesizer, or they gave it a flute recording. And basically what it does is it takes that input signal and creates like a sub-octave square wave. So one octave below the sound, it kind of creates this square wave, and then it goes another octave down, another octave down, and you end up with four kind of sub-octave mixes of square waves. But then what it does also is it has a second channel that you can mix into it, and then you can cross-modulate them to together. And if it sounds like gibberish, what I'm talking about, it's, it's, it is kind of technical. But this is kind of where I started at, from this description of what it does and listening to it. And I wanted to kind of recreate that. And so on the podcast, 
I've been talking about, you know, kind of prototyping process, like maybe I don't want to jump straight into code, maybe I want to figure out how to model this. And so I started with Reactor. Has, has anyone used Reactor here before, no? Okay. It's kind of like a programming language, like a signal programming language. This is what I ended up creating, which is quite similar. And you'll see I have some other modular sense here. I have an oscillator going in. But the idea was to create a kind of similar kind of module that I could patch other signals into. So I think, again, probably the best way is maybe just to demonstrate by what it sounds like. And I just have a sine wave. And then maybe we can take a look at how it's built. This is the input signal, and I can change the pitch, and then I can bring in a sub-octave below it. And I can turn on and off the cross-modulation here. And so I can get pretty similar effects to the, the original. All right, so let's take a look. At how this is built. So if this looks a little bit like a mess, it kind of is. And I think this is maybe the downfall a little bit of these signal flow style programming languages. You end up getting wires going everywhere and it kind of, you have to kind of visually organize things. <laughs> so here I have the input audio of the module going in to this macro, which is kind of like a group or a function you might think. And I found this built-in frequency divider that kind of did exactly what I need to do. So I'm dividing the first frequency because you can have it just turn to the same frequency of a square wave, one octave below, an octave below that octave, so on and so forth. And so this just outputs all of the basic square waves. And then I needed a way to switch it, so I have this cross modulation that changes it, whether it's being um, ring modulated or not. And so that's basically switching all of these different channels, channels that are being mixed together, whether they're being um, just added together or multiplied. And finally, there's some sort of mixing going down at the end because I want to bring the sound volume down, right? Because we don't want to get too hot and start distorting. So this is something like I was playing around with trying to get a similar sound, listening to what it was online. And this is kind of like the prototype. And I think I've got something pretty similar. Now I can kind of play around with it as if I had the real thing, but in, in the digital realm. But I didn't want to stop there. <laughs> and I got interested in this language called Faust. Is, is anyone... Nobody has really heard of it before, right, or used it too much. Okay, cool. So Faust is super cool, and I think at first it can be super confusing because it can be very cryptic because it's like very simple focused, but I think it's actually a really cool language and pretty easy to get started with. Can everyone see this okay? So I've taken a couple of classes at Cadenzi. They're, bo they're both free. One's on Reactor, one's on Faust. I highly recommend both. And they kind of talk about all the semantics of the language and how to build synths. But the way they explain this is kind of like in C++ or whatever, or maybe in JavaScript, this is like your main function. So this is what's going to be executed first. This is kind of where we're starting. And this plus is actually a completely valid program, which seems bizarre, right? And it could even be, I think, like one or <laughs> plus one or, or something like this. It, it could be very, very simple. And there could be a bunch of symbols that are hard to understand. So I've been experimenting and going through the same kind of process. So I've got some messy code maybe I'll bring up and show you what that looks like. Let's see. OK. And I have no idea how loud this might be. OK. So. <laughs> My big problem with this was, like, how can I create this square wave from an input signal? And I wanted to kind of simplify the problem, right? Like, how can I get started easily? And so they've got a bunch of built-in functions, like this OS, OSC220. This just creates a sine oscillator. There's all sorts of oscillators, different things you can use. And it has this really strange kind of composition model that's unlike what I've seen before. 
but these colons are just sequential, right? So every time we have a colon, it's kind of going, the input of OS, OS C, the output of that is then going into the square it function. The square it function outputs then going to the input of the sub octave function, which is then being multiplied times S1, which if I scroll up is either a variable or a function, depending on how you think about it, which itself is a function that creates a UI element. And so a lot of things are built this way, but it's, it's not like really how I think about programming because we don't have like, we have maybe simple numbers, right? but we're dealing with this input stream that's continuously changing. And so the way it works with Faust is that the same types of operations used with numbers are also being applied to these streams. But we have to think about them a little bit differently in terms of kind of circuit and composition. And this one is not that complicated. Um, I can explain this square it function <laughs> and, and maybe it'll make more sense. So we have this input sine wave, but it could be any kind of wave. The way that the MOTM works is the same way. It looks at the audio signal coming in, and once it gets to a high, certain high level, it's like, okay, this is the start of the square wave, and it gets to the bottom, the low, and that's the bottom. So in the same way, this underscore is basically representing like a, a wire or a single connection of the input, and then I'm spreading it into two places, and then if you can imagine in parallel, I'm now saying if it's greater than nine, or if it's less than two, and basically, those comparisons output a stream of either one or zero, right? It's not like a single value, but a stream. And then they're kind of mixed back together and then sent to the output. And I think this is really hard to, to think about in your head, at least for me. Let's see if I can look at this one, an earlier version. So it gives you this really nice way to kind of visualize the program and the routing. And so when I talked about there's this weird composition model, the thing is you're kind of thinking about splitting the signal into parallel. And there's also this idea of like recursive splitting going back in. And this is kind of a nice way to take a look at it. So we can look at the square it function. And it may, might make more sense this way to look at it. So we have the signal come in. And on the top end, where we're splitting the signal, we're saying, is it greater than 0 0.9? And the values go between 0 and 1. And if it is, then it outputs a one, right? And then we're saying if it's less than 0 0.2, then we output a zero, right? And so then we mix the signals together and we end up with this square wave that kind of matches, right? Kind of makes sense, but it's, it's kind of a weird way to think about it. So I think maybe what I want to do is kind of show how, if you're interested in audio, how you can play around with this quite easily to create your own sounds. So I'll create a new document. So we can create like an oscillator at 440. Let's see here. So it auto completes, and then it's a little bit confusing, right? Like how do you know what the parameter values are? It doesn't quite auto complete everything. So a nice trick is to hit Control D, which brings up the documentation for that, and then it talks about the function, right? Like wh what's this OSC expecting? It's expecting a frequency. So it's a little bit slow going compared to like what I'm used to in Visual Studio Code, but we can give it a frequency like 440. Run this, and we get that. So, if we use addition, right, like, like this is kind of like an audio mixing two signals together, right, addition. So we should expect to hear both of these sounds at the same time. Let's see here, defined here. Again, typo. All right. But in the case of like ring modulation, if we're using multiplication, then we start to get into either ampli amplitude modulation or we get into like ring modulation depending on what the values are that are being input and we can get kind of wildly different sounds. And if we were to sweep these or play them, we would get even stranger sounds yet. So I think what you can do is you can add all sorts of sounds that are pre-built in and then you can start to experiment with this and then start to write your own code that's kind of more low, lower level. 
they have all sorts of things that are modeled like guitars, djembe drums, all sorts of things like that. User interface elements, so we can take this um, button gate. We can pass it into the djembe, and we can see what values it needs. Frequency, strike position, strike sharpness, gain, and trigger. Okay, so I have these kind of memorized from before. And we have the djembe sound, and then we can take that and port it into something like an echo. We can look and see what type of values we would need, a max duration, duration, feedback. And then we could create either hard-coded values or create user interface elements to run it, right? And I think this is one thing, right? It's like an audio playground, but you might wonder, like, why, why use this? I think one is you have a bunch of a, a big part of the library where you can go ahead and already kind of play around with things. It's like a really nice playground. But the other thing is that it's very useful because you can export into C++. You can use it in JavaScript. You can export audio unit plugins. And you can basically generate all this stuff without much work. And normally, to create that, you have to write everything in C++, get it into DSP. There's also another thing called Juice that you could get into. But it's a little bit more difficult to kind of get into just playing around with audio and prototyping. And I think if you were interested to create audio plugins and make them look a little bit nicer, there's also a way to use with Juice for the user interface, and then just use this for the audio rendering underneath. So that's what I have for the demo for today. You can also play it with a MIDI keyboard in Chrome, which is pretty cool. I didn't even know that Chrome did that. Um, but we could try that. And if anyone has any questions, we can take them now. So thank you. Okay, let's see if this will work. So basically, the same types of techniques I was showing you can more or less be kind of automatically integrated with MIDI. So not only just processing audio, but you can build like a whole MIDI instrument and then create an audio effects or VST or, or really whatever you want to do from that. It's a super cool technology. Cool. All right. So if there's no questions, that's it. Thank you.